What is Super 7's Paintball? Paintball is a 5 on 5 game where two teams go head to head in 10 minute matches fighting to take out the other team for one point. Teams get one point by shooting all five opponents and pushing the button at the enemy team's start base. Players are out when a paintball hits and breaks on them, including their gun. Between each point, there is a two minute break to reload, clean up and prepare for the next point. To win, a team must gain a four point lead or be ahead on points when the 10 minute time limit expires. For more information, check out www.super7spaintball.com. Yeah. I try to tell you, you ain't ready. Have you ever seen a man not afraid to die? Gave his life for a dream. Born hustler, so the game conceived. A cage beast, but now I'm free. How can you blame me? I was born for this, the game chose me. Now I've been training for this my whole life. Carpe diem, huh, cease the moment, right, right. We gon' turn up and rock plenty ice. This is our time, yeah, I'm about that life. I'm a street dude, teach dudes to think quicker. Would take over the world, but you I dream bigger. Never satisfied, I'm trying to be richer. And pour out a little bit for those who ain't with us. Ready, ready. I don't get ready, I stay ready Cause the consequences is heavy My man D said he would never quit Even though the thing's heavy We push like a 7-7 seven, seven Chevy Boy, ready, ready My whole click since 06 Was on the bottom, now we running Ah, good morning everybody. We're here, day three of the Super 7s series, the HK Army Classic. We've uh, got a couple more prelim games left and then we'll be on to finals. Yep, uh, and welcome back to Scott Martin. Uh, unfortunately, we uh, lost, Scott, uh, Scott, lost Scott yesterday and on Friday. Uh, he was away at a line dancing competition. Uh, how did you go on that, uh, by the way, man? Uh, yeah, there's no no better way to express your individuality but yep. a bit of line dancing. Line dancing. Yeah, it's very big up um, McGrath Hill Way where uh, Scott uh, lives and was raised. Uh, <laughs> 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 we're just looking at the commentators. Uh, Ringo Ning. Um, uh, Ringo, is Ringo is Ringo back today? I'm not sure. Oh, guys, we are game line or something. I think so. So uh, we're going to start off the webcast today with a doozy of a game. Uh, re this is a rematch from last year's Masters Finals. We have Perth Crisis on the home side, uh, which has got uh, Ben Simpson and... You want to grab all this? Yeah, it's a Marcelo Margot. Yep. Guessing for them. They've also got Chop, Joe Burtis. Chops. Chris Austin, you see on your screen there, player seven. And you see the breakout from the uh, away side there. And uh, looks like uh, Chris Austin's made it in, but no, he's been shot off the break. So, and Alex Orr, another big kill. So, uh, SWAT lose Alex Orr, it's a four on four game. The Perth Crisis look like they're trying to be a bit more aggressive out of the gate, but uh, now both teams are just happy to sit back, let this one slow down a bit. So, Joe, so Ben Simpson fills into stake one. Not sure if it is. And uh, looks like Zach uh, Hunter has made it to, to uh, Dorito three. And Jeremy Fitton is has been uh, eliminated, I think. Yep, yeah, from Snake Two. I think Ben Simpson took him out. So Ben moves up to Snake Two for Perth Crisis. Nick Wells filling in the snake behind. So if Ben's lucky, he might get that shot on the shoreline there. Oh, and Nick Wells does get the shot on Ben Simpson. Ben didn't see Nick pop. So now it's three. Oh, no, it's, uh, looks like, who's that on the right coming off now? So it's the Marcelo Margo in Snake Corner. And, That's Dave Phillips, the Irishman. And yeah, Dave Phillips is gone. So it's a three on two. And it's actually not, it's actually uh, not uh, Nick Wells. It was actually Dave Black, captain oh, yeah. of the was bumped into the Snake one. Where are the same? And Dan, you see Dan uh, right now looking at a crisis player, uh, Marcelo Margo. He's having a bit of a gun, bit of a gun battle happening right now. So, so that was the big move you see Dave Black on the screen. That was pretty much the move that sort of got yeah. back into this one. Catching Ben Simpson uh, bumping to the Snake 50. Yeah, yeah, it was a smart play. So you can see now from the Dorito corner right now, you've got uh, Gunton. Will, Gunton. Yeah, Will Gunton and uh, Dan. 
see how these Doritos are all stacked up in a line. It's pretty hard to sort of fly heads up where Dan and uh, I think it's Hunter are going head to head down there. So Will and Dan Woods is just uh, waiting, I think. Oh, so yeah, Will's backed up to the corner to try and try and give Dan a bit of a, ha a hand. Shoot, yeah. Shoots the paint over his shoulder. Dan, you can see the shot here. Dan's got a real good shot across on Marcelo, so they're yeah. able to contain him pretty well in that burrito corner. This first point is really always important in these games, getting that momentum swing. If you can get that early, it sort of helps for the rest of the game. We've got 10 minutes of uh, overall game time. We've, you can see on the top of our scoreboard there, we've just gone about two and a half minutes through that. And right now the numbers, it's uh, three low players for SWAT. So you've got SWAT in the Dorito 3 and the Dorito corner. And Dave Black's on the Snake 1. Uh, looking down the tape. And then in the crisis side, uh, they've got, I think it's Zach in Dorito 3 as well. And Marcelo Mogo in the Snake corner. So Will, Will Gunter's doing well here. You know, he's backed up to that tower. You can sort of just to the left of you in the middle of the screen there. Uh, so he's sort of trying to make something happen, which is really comes down to that that third guy has to be the one to break this open because those two front players are SWAT and can't really go much further than where they are now. So you can hear uh, Marcelo's calling out to Zach, just uh, trying to keep the, keep the count right. And it uh, looks like uh, Will Gunn has bumped from the Dorito corner over to the Dorito tower. So it's really on Will now. He has to be the one to go up through the middle and make something happen here. You can hear the red fly sort of slowing down and everyone's starting to run a bit low on paint. So Dan might be ready to go here. No. And Will Gunton getting Will shot Gunton out. Will getting shot out. I think that's by Marcelo. So now, yeah, Marcelo's calling it's a 2-1-2. Two, two. So I think in this position, um, you know, the two SWAT guys have to play on their knees. Whereas Marcelo now, he's up on his feet. I think he's the one that would be able to control, take command of this game and move from here. But, uh... The SWAT guys are in good spots to sort of close out the field and not let not let those big moves happen. So we're looking now at Dave Black in Snake One on the screen, and uh, he's trying to look at trying to get an angle across onto Zach while always watching the snake. He keeps popping back across to make sure Marcelo doesn't bump up on him. And I think uh, you know. One thing they're going to be mindful of right now, there you see Marcelo there. Marcelo will, knowing how Marcelo plays, he'll wait till there's like two minutes left in the clock he and wants, then he'll try and do something. He wants to set his traps. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's famous for that. Yeah. Yeah. Welcome back. Ringo, the yeah. flying Hawaiian. Oh, oh and, and Dan Woods. Two on one. There's so a two was, on one right now. That was a great cross the shot field. It's Marcelo hard. set his trap. Yeah. yeah. So it's usually there, Christ, uh, SWAT sort of had that point, I think, early on in the, in the match. And Christ then, is, yeah, definitely able aggressive to bring early. Back. Ben did a good job out of the snake, shooting a few guys out across field. Got caught napping when, when Dave Black filled in. Yeah. And then the momentum. So it shifted back and forth a few times. And uh, yeah, it was really up to SWAT, I think, had the momentum. When they had the three on two, and, and Will Gunton was in that tower, I think that was a pretty soft there. Uh, yeah. But he easily could have, could have made yeah, it I think, up there, I think so. he got taken out by... Um, I'm pretty sure he got taken out by uh, Marcelo there, so... It's all right, you know, first game in the morning, everyone's always a little bit rusty, but yeah. as we see on that clock there, five minutes of game time gone, That's so it was a long, long point, yeah. Long point, yeah. So how's the weekend been for, for points? I missed a few of the games and that here and there. I've been, been trying to keep close. up. It's, it's, it's been, been close. Really like, there's close. been a lot of, well, there's a lot of draws. Yep. Uh, a lot of 3-2 scenarios. Yeah, right. Um, you know, and close, and, and, and look close. at the EDs. The EDs yeah. were really low yesterday. So, you know, even though teams were winning, um, they weren't winning with many guys. There wasn't many, you know, like five alive points. You know, there yeah, was okay. one here and there. But yeah. even with teams where they lost, you know, say 4-1 or 3-2, sorry, 4-1 four, four, or 4-0, they weren't, the score didn't really reflect the game. Yep. That's right. They weren't two-minute 4 nil games and stuff like that. They, yeah. were, they were long drawn out 4 nil. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, so. Um, Master of Ceremonies, Mike. <laughs> Just sitting up here, so we've got our. We can see our messages. Uh, Alice Hennessy, good morning, Mike and Scott. Good morning to you, too. Go WA Perth Crisis first up, then go Perth Talk. Yeah, so it's been pretty successful so far for the WA contingency, uh, with three of the uh, 10 teams coming from uh, West Australia. Uh, at this stage, at the end of games yesterday, two of the four. 
top spots at the end uh, of two days of play was actually uh, Menace. It was great to see Menace back up in the top four and uh, obviously Perth Crisis in first place. So. Yeah, and, and Torta in fifth place as well. So yes. They're not, they're not far off it. Yeah. They have a chance. Yeah, talking of playing, I mean, Torta's in a, a new team. They've got, they got a couple of guys in their team, both that, that little kid. Uh, Damien. Damien. Oh Damien my God, that guy was. Uh, no, he's not. He's not a hairs. No, no, he's not Damien. Yeah, Damien. Well, looking at uh, looking at the talk roster, they got Matho with them. So yeah, a good and head, Thomas Kim, a good smart head on that. That's two really good players. Oh, go the right. Big break up. And five alive again by looks of it. Yep, five alive on each side. Yeah, a bit more conservative from both teams. First deal from Jeremy Finn. So Jeremy Finn goes from the tower, and, and they lose Jack up. Jack up. The corner. And Explosive able to punch into the stake that's one. A, that's a five on two now. Five yeah. on two. So SWAT side just getting chopped up. I think that, that they should like actually tower this game, to be honest. They yeah, definitely try to save the time. SWAT should tower it right now. They should tower. Here comes Hunter. Wow, SWAT really wants the ball drop on this one. Now they're towering. Yeah. Good breakout point there by uh, Crisis. Some nice shooting Getting there. Jeremy straight away, and then also Jacker in the Dorito corner straight up. So yeah, they're doing the damage from the air with their guns straight away. That was a far more convincing point. Crisis was founded in 2012 in Perth, Western Australia. Crisis are the 2017's Pro Series champions, winning two events and placing second at the other two rounds. Some off-season changes have seen some new blood join the ranks of this veteran squad, and they are hungry for a win at round one. Here's their roster. Zach Hunter Kazirski, Nick Lamb, Ben Thomas, Chris Austin, Marcelo Margot, Dave Ethan Clogger, Joe Chopspurs. Crisis roster has some of the best players from the US, UK, and Australia. Known for being one of the toughest teams in the league, they played in every finals match last year and are one of the favorites to win the event. So well, <laughs> We're, we're, we're looking at the crisis pits right now. So crisis is up two nil. Uh, that second point was a real, uh, a real quick uh, forty second point. Uh, uh, basically, they got they killed two players within the first ten seconds of uh, game time, and then uh, Ray would just push through and finish off the other three five alive. So we'll swat. We'll swat do now to uh, counteract uh, the starting 20, ten seconds of the points. Yeah, I would say try and stay alive. I wonder whether the uh, SWAT's going to play conservatively or they're going to push the They only have four. It looks like four. No, they got five. five Dan Woods. Uh, Dan Woods is. He always ties his other. shoelace. Every every point, he's tying his shoelace. Right. Maybe that's a lucky charm thing. Yeah. I think they're going to. Won't last point. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the lane that one. With a big move from Chris yeah. Austin. And they shoot Jeremy off the break okay. too. I think. So two points in a row. Shooting, shooting uh, the SWAT snake player out. I think uh, Perth Price is still putting three guns shooting that, that yeah, snake play. Alex able to fill out to the snake corner of those doing a bit of damage control. That's not bad with two guns on him. My solo on those Ben Simpson and uh, uh, Chris Austin on him. So Chris Austin's moved up to this baby W. In, on the insert, uh, insert of the snake, has that been a popular play for the weekend? See, Many people have been going there. So see Ben Simpson's bumped to uh, the snake uh, one now. Clearly what they're doing is that Zach Hunt is actually shooting at Alex Hall. Just lobbing shots at him. So Dave Black goes in, fills snake one. So Ben Simpson now is aware that Dave Black is there. So Chris Austin and Ben Simpson lined up in the snake there. Charlie's Angels back to back, and now Chris moving into the 50 snake. Oh, that's another kill from uh, Crisis. So I think that now it's a five on three, I believe. So again, you know, Crisis is quite happy now. Yeah. Just, uh, 
So at the moment, just, bit of a slow, just keep everybody in. Bit of a survival mode for City Slot at the moment. We've got Dorito 1. Yeah. And we've got Snake 1. Snake Corner. City Slot. Still 5 alive for Crisis. You know, how long does SWAT sit here and let the time tick off before they yeah. throw the towel in? Yeah. Even though it is a 5 on 3 game, you got you got you got to think bigger picture. At the moment, crosses don't have to really do much other than just sit still. Yeah. Just run the time down. Chris, Austin really don't even have to head punch. He just has to just sit there quietly. Two and a half minutes left of game time. Yeah, I think SWAT should be uh, toweling it here, let, let the bodies reset and go back and try and win three quick points. Well, Dan Woods. Dan Woods just doing the uh, tap of the retreat yeah. and then back to the Rito 1 again. SWAT and, and prices are just kicking on SWAT here. Yeah. Oh, ganging okay, up on it. That's now a three on four. And... Uh, is that Dan? That's the tower. Tower. the tower. So they got two, just over two minutes to try and get back probably, three quick points. It's doable. They should have tied that at probably about a half a minute to a minute earlier. Yeah, yeah, yeah I think so. There was no, there was like the chances of turning it around, actually shooting out five guys, and then yeah. getting on down the end of the field in yeah, yeah, three minutes. They've got a snake fifty and a snake, snake two. Yeah, um, you know the base is loaded. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Well, crisis is uh, they're definitely um, uh, just controlling the air straight from the get go from the start. You saw that with Jeremy. Uh, Jeremy, they had, they had uh, Nick Lamb and not, sorry, not Nick Lamb, sorry, um, Chris, Austin Chris Austin and Marcelo Mago and Ben Simpson all shoot down between the can and the Snake Tower. And like Ringo brought up, they even have their Doritos guys shooting up at the Snake yeah. too, so they're yeah. just ganging up on. Yeah, so areas. that spot, uh, and when we play SWAT. My sole job was to keep Alex at bay from Dorito yeah. 1 and 2. And that's so I was like lobbing like shots at the corner, and I said, if Alex is standing up right, fighting out and shooting over the top of the bunker, means that he's just got free reign of the field. Yeah. But if I lob shot at him, I'm checking him and, off, and letting him know that I'm I reckon watching. those shots, even though they took Jeremy out, I honestly believe that those three guns were meant to try and take out Alex. Alex, if they Alex has been so commanding for SWAT uh, all weekend Very so true. far. So, I mean, they trying to take out Alex and they've got Jeremy as a yeah. bonus. Not taking yeah. away from Jeremy, <laughs> no, no. but yeah, yeah. Yeah, but the thing is, is that Alex is an anchor on the yeah. team. Well, I said right. even with them in position all that, Alex was able to bump all the way to the corner anyway. Yeah. You control Alex, you can control the snake. <laughs> so yeah, have many people, that insert bunker that you see Alex or on the left of your screen just walking past, have many people been playing that over yes. the weekend? Has that been a pretty good Oh, the one bunker? further up, just near the 50? Uh, no, the, yeah, the one back, like oh, sort of the in the room with the snake bit, yeah, the yes. end of that snake uh, the cake. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, okay. So uh, a good example would be uh, Damien from Talk. Yep. He was consistently taking that spot uh, and then using that as a uh, lead in to the snake 50. Yeah, okay. Okay, so you see SWAT on the and left hand side of your screen. A lot of other teams did the same thing too. Much bigger push there from SWAT. Oh, I think Nick just got... I think he got shot in the back of the head. I think Nick got shot by his own player. That was a big, this is what SWAT need to do, you know, you don't want to sit back and try and just, and, and win the air, you got to, you got to take the fight to them and try and win these points quickly. Let's see if SWAT can hold up, oh, there goes Dan Woods, there's now a, a, I think there's only now, two players left for SWAT. I think there's a 4-1-2 or 4-1-3. Yeah. yeah, it's only, I think there's only uh, Alex. Or and Jeremy Fidden, I think. Jacka. Oh, Jacka in the Dorito corner. Is that okay, Jacka so. or is that Will Gunton? Oh, yeah, the Dorito corner. Yeah, Dorito. Hiding away over there. So, yeah, the, like big props to swap for trying on this one, but the time just ticking away. Yeah, it looks like this is going to smash. Yeah, so Alex getting a sniper shot cross yes, field on the back of the off. Replay Here we go, Jeremy launching. Does he take anyone with him? That's four plays walk off instead of the Dorito three. And, and Chris Austin as well. So yeah, you know, big props to SWAT for the heart for trying. Um, this is the only way you gotta play when you're down on points and you're running out of time, but still like wasting way too much time here just getting that last player. And so I've reclaimed with one and point. 
this is match more or less. Yeah. Yeah, 22 seconds is, uh, they're not going to get two points in the 22 seconds, I don't think. And so never, but... Okay, so, uh, good morning Mike and Scott, we had that a little bit here before, sorry, Donella, yummin, good morning guys, good morning Donella, 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 Donella
uh, per talk have is it Thomas Kim from the Sacramento DMG helping him out. Mm -hmm. Perth Torque. Perth Torque has been playing since 2011 with its original five members. The newly formed Perth Torque team is headed up by captain and coach Dave Matheson. They have also added superstar Thomas Kim of Sacramento DMG to the Sydney roster. The team has also made a three-year goal to compete in their local MPS tournaments, the Super 7s in Sydney, and if it allows, NXL and Battlefield. Here is their roster. Daniel Harris, Dominic Harris, Alan Cole, Cameron Harris, Chris Hennessy, Luke Marcial, Clint McDonald, Damian Sin, and Dave Matheson. Promoted to Division 1 in 2013 saw them as record holders as the youngest ever Division 1 team in Australia. All players were under the age of 20 years old. <laughs> so, I went back. Went back. There's we'll lots get... of chuckling behind the scenes here, but. Uh... Yeah, uh, we're looking explicit on the screen right now. They're about to play Perth Talk. Is that Mitch Hackett? Yes. That is Mitch Hackett. Another Mitch Hackett one. is back. Another, you know, another that, Nicholas that, Cage retirement. Yeah. I didn't know they made WD-40 cans that big to get all the rust off. Oh, mate, no, he's had no rusting in this oh, weekend. Oh, oh, oh. That guy's been running to the Dream yeah, 3 awesome. and 4 off the break. And Rock, rocking the old school explicit jersey. Yeah. Jared Baker, a new pickup for explicit this year. Yeah, great. That's a good, solid pickup for them. So it's about time someone grabbed him. He's too good to just be free agenting around all the yeah. time. Shall we run up the stake? Uh, Jared is not playing today. No, he's there. He's, he's on there. the field. So you Jared are mistaken. Corsier. No, no, Jared, no, Jared Corsier. Oh, Cozy, uh, yeah. yeah. He's, uh, I don't think he's here this weekend. But no, he doesn't play for explosive. He plays for Envious. No, no, I'm saying he guessed for explosive. You know, for yeah. this year, no, he's not playing, uh, he's not playing uh, Super 7s. Carlos, what are you doing watching? You're supposed to be out there reffing. <laughs> well, he was helping the pits, I believe. Okay, so explicit on the home side right now, and uh, Perth Talk on the away side. Yep, so you can see on screen now, Mitch Hackett, Ooh, that's the bounce. bounce. Plucker, captain of uh, Sydney Explicit in the Snake 1. You can see the further right now, Talk's got the Snake 3, and Explicit's got the Snake 1 on their side. Talk also taking that center brick off the break. I it was the Snake 1, it's like 2. The snake 3, the Snake 1. From the back there, you got uh, yeah, Jared Baker there at the wedge on the snake side, but he's looking at Dorito. Plucker squeezes up to snake two. There's no one really looking down the snake line right now, so. Yeah, Peekaboo! Oh, there goes Damien. He definitely got hit. Losing a player from the Dorito side. Yeah. Oh, yeah, little Damien Sin in uh, for he's, he's the lethal one to watch out for on this team. Um, yeah, I mean, they've got Thomas Kim obviously still as well, and they've got Mappo. So, uh, Talk's got a real nice strong lineup. Oh, and Plucker, where'd that come from? He got that? traded out with, with uh, BC, Brian. Uh, but yeah, sorry, Alan Cole, AC. Yeah. AC, yeah. And looks like Jared Baker's walking off as well. I think he might have got shot on the back from the Dorito side. So there's Mitch Hackett at the snake corner on the so screen right now. Only player left alive for explicit. Don't think he realises there's a snake and a tent on him. And the, and the brick. So Torp took that brick early off the, off the uh, break. And he played really smart, just, just being quiet, sitting there, biding his time, and then just looked like he chopped up that Dorito side when they all tried to run through. So four on one now. Shaq is doing a good job of being the one guy left alive on four. Oh. And as you say that, he gets shot in the face. Hey, he held him out for a while. I know, he did. It's interesting because I've like, seen him play in the back corner, so like, whereas you know, Mitch is the guy that you send to the snake 50 Mitch, and Mitch. order the Dorito 3. He's got Mitch. serious speed. Mick, I should say, yes. should have focused on Damian Moore and actually went looking for the move to the 50 snake yeah. rather than look back inside. In that process, he actually got shot. Cool. Yeah, and there, no one was...
So we're looking at explicit. Let's go to the talk pit, eh? Have a look inside the talk pit. So, uh, yeah, talk pick, uh, uh, sorry, talk. First uh, point uh, goes to talk. Talk, yep. And you see Dave Matson in there. 7.51 uh, on the clock. McDonald. Something interesting I saw from explicit in that game is that whenever talk made a big push, it was like explicit were looking the other way. So That's they were right. in the snake and everyone was zoned up on the Doritos. Yep. When they switched to the snake, everyone just yep. on the on the talk side moved down through the Doritos. So explicit seemed like they uh, had a good breakout, but it's just the mid-game, you know, the guys working together and, and changing the game plan up on the fly is what they let them down in that point. I did see a whole lot of communication in the snake area between uh, Mitch and Mick. Um, so they could yeah. have worked a little bit better there to help them get to We've seen all, all weekend, Mick's been really you know, no, no, uh, Mick's been really strong out. through the snake and yeah, for, for whatever reason. We I think it's because him a bit further up and said, hey, listen, what, what's stopping you? Yeah, I, look, I've got to say this is, you know, if these guys have been watching the talk guys playing, the one thing that I'd be really daunted about right now, sending someone to Snake 50, is that little bastard Damien <laughs> from talk. Every time someone gets someone in the Snake 50, he comes through and just just takes them out. He's been very successful with uh, bunkering people on that Snake 50. So uh, maybe I think Plucker might have been thinking, I'll, I'll just sit on the outside here and I'll take Damien out when he tries to bump, uh -huh. but Damien really didn't try to bump. He got to Dorito, uh, so to Snake 3, and just pretty much looked inside Jared and asked the match. Jared, 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 so, Jared. Down your hair loaded up, ready to roll. Like 15 pods on his back. So this time, we're getting shot off the break. Did you see that? That was real quick. That was really cool. Well, not that too, because oh, of his fight. Yeah. Because Pod of loses two off the break, so. The height advantage for Damien is actually pretty good. <laughs> I saw the shot went over his head, right? And that, you know, when the corner comes with that wing? Yeah. It was shooting over that, and it was actually below that. <laughs> <laughs> nice call there by Thomas Kim. Oh. Now, see, he knows he's in a snake. Oh, I'm going to bet. He's going to get bumped. Yeah. There's a very high chance. He's very high chance. If you, if you, you know, if you're yeah. around there watching, he's coming from that's Taylor Hopkins there. Oh, oh that was a that spin. Was a spin. <laughs> Lucky you didn't oh, get a penalty. Oh, that was wow. super didn't late. He? That's yeah, trading out to that. Damien Sin doing exactly what the snake player needs to do. You yeah. know, there's a guy in there, you just got to go take him out. So, yeah, that was two, on, two on bar four game now. This was at uh, the advantage. That's Thomas Kim on your screen there, holding it down in the snake corner. And Pluck is coming through the center 50. Let's see what uh, they can produce here. So what is it, that two on two or three on two? Three on two. There's uh, two guys on the Dorito for explicit. So Pluck is in that spot when you're playing so in the morning. They've still got the snake corner too. Pluck is in that spot when you're playing in the morning where you want to be up so past that shadow. Really, what's stopping Mitch? What's stopping Mitch? Is, is any, there's the no sun. One. I think the yeah, medium Mitch is just, just putting paint down onto Thomas. I mean, you've got your, you've got your boy at the 50 centre, uh, and it looks like he's going to shot at. Yeah, well, Thomas is putting a little bit of paint at him, but, but not really much. I re like I was about to say, that sun is killer in the morning, trying to play course, the high no, side no, through there. But, uh, so, yeah, Plucker trying to make something happen. This is where, you know, Explicit can sort of throw this one away if they don't work together. Exactly. Like you were saying, getting, getting Mitch up there and having a... A push come from the whole whole team instead of just one or two guys. Now this could end in a disaster from uh, me. Yeah, Thomas, the ninja, walking up through the snake. Yeah. Only player left alive now, so three on one. Jared Baker putting some shots Ooh. from the Dorito on his on his path, but staying him alive. Yeah, oh, the other hit. In front of his hopper, just on nicked on his hopper. No, I see it. That was an, even before that. Oh, okay. Yeah. So that's that was a, a real a classic example. Although I didn't end up going the right way for Thomas Kim, but a classic example of when you're on the defense, yep. you, you want to be aggressive. Yeah. Yep. Making that move, they're not yep. expecting it, and and he almost caught a couple of guys napping. But lucky Jared Baker for explicit, able to see that move and uh, got him from the Doritos. Yeah. I think if I think if their towel, if Talks towel player had been able just to survive that a little bit longer. I think Thomas might have been able to actually turn right. that around we'll because no before. one, yeah, no one knew he was there. And uh, yeah, and well played for well played the plucker too, like using the whole field, yeah. working his way up through the guts. Definitely playing really well. Yeah, yes, he's leading. He's leading the way. Leading That's from the front, mate. Yeah. yeah. yeah.
So we've got a one-all game right now, looking at the, the, the Perth Torque pit, and uh, you know, trying to work out what went wrong in that last point. I don't think it really did anything terribly well, the, wrong. The was, big thing that Explicit did early was being able to shoot Daniel Hairs out off the break. He, he took three steps out towards the snake side and just put his hand up yeah. and walked off. So that was huge, huge uh, off the break shooting. And um, the other, yeah, the other small thing is that we see uh, Thomas Hop, uh, Tom Hopkins, who am I? Thomas. Taylor Hopkins, sorry, there, played 10. Doing the classic, like, first day, new move, going into the snake, whacking into his bunker, yeah. letting, letting, uh, and yeah, you know, if you do that against Daniel, Daniel Damien, that's, that's right, Damien, Damien, here's his move, Damien, we yeah. see Damien knows he's there because he's hit his bunker. And yeah. yeah, lucky you didn't get a penalty there. Yeah, yeah. I think so. Right front, but that's all right. Like the refs obviously kind of were a bit closer, could see it yeah. better than we can. So if you are tuning in on Facebook, you can drop us a line. Let us know you're watching, and we'll uh, we can see uh, your shout outs and stuff like that. So a uh, big shout out to James Coward. Hopefully, your boss doesn't see it, mate. So yeah, Pal Hawk has done a real good job getting the snake. And I think that's uh, McDonald's. Moving up. Oh, Mitch is doing the big run through and we got the 50 cents off. Yep. That's a good kill. Yeah, but Taylor's just got to be controlled. Oh, and at the back of the field, we've lost, Explosive lost two players. Uh, back center and Snake. Okay, that's it. And three. now, so it's just Thomas Hopkins left on the field on his own. Taylor. 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 Sorry, Taylor. Sorry, Taylor Hopkins. Taylor doesn't know that yeah, he's on his own. No. Yeah. That's when he went to the 50, he had a full team. It was a talent. So, all right. I think he's a little bit surprised. If you're, the, if you're the coach of Explicit, four and a half minutes, one all tie, would you have towed it then? Yeah, yes. I think so. Yeah. yeah, you wouldn't. You wouldn't let him. Well, that was a f not not that, with okay, so not with Tom to give uh, Thomas Kim down on the well, fifty dribble. Not even that. Back. But what yeah, if, what if they do a dirty hang? Side. Sorry, they got three loaded. Yeah. Like, on the, what if they do a dirty hang? Yeah, but then yeah. if they don't and they do it, then you've got. You know, you've got three minutes left on the clock or two minutes and you're down. What's a dirty hang uh, penalty? What's a reverse. reverse. Or no point. Yeah. I'd rather that. Okay. I'll let 10 seconds I mean, burn off. You, you that, never know. That's a relatively big gamble. So, <laughs> so we just go. talked about Taylor Hawkins doing the, the move of getting into the stake and hitting the brick. And we saw that massive move through the middle from Mitch Hackett taking out um, Clint McDonald for tour. The only reason he knew he was there is because he went up and whacked into the yep. bunker again. Yeah. So if, if you guys are out there new and you're watching, yeah. don't don't, don't whack hit the bunker bunkers. again. <laughs> if I you're know. trying to be sneaky, at all levels of people. I mean, you, it's hard because you want to get in there as quick as possible and you want to get in as close to the bunker as possible. But yeah, if it's, if it's a, a bunker on the fifty, yeah. don't hit the bunker. Especially, Especially if you do all that work sneaking up yeah. in there. Particularly now, there's no coaching. It's important that uh, you don't give yourself away unnecessarily. Uh, William McDonald saying good morning champions. Hi Will. All of says, Sean Byrne. Sean Byrne. There's a guy. Oh, from Ben Beretta. There's a yeah, guy. Ben Beretta. Just saying Kevin Wingman, Whiteman, sorry, is watching Benny from Beretta. the semi-pro field. Benny yeah. Beretta recently just got uh, married. Yeah. Congrats. Attended his wedding. It's awesome. Congrats Benny. Yeah, congratulations congrats, mate. Benny. Um, so, yeah, if you are watching, let us know where you're tuning in from. Yeah, definitely. We had people from all over the world yesterday. Well, Worldwide. <laughs> where's, where's Bear? Oh look, worldwide. Jonathan Cullen, he's watching from Annengrove Road. <laughs> Annie you know, Grove Road, California. You know, <laughs> you know if you just like uh, ride your bike up, you can actually see it live. I think with their I think, I think <laughs> with their own eyeballs. I think Jonathan is actually in the semi pit area as well. Semi oh right, he's so. not sitting in Bunnings. No, I'm pretty sure he's sipping coffee, in Bunnings, so, yeah. <laughs> having a Playing snack, <laughs> Bunnings snack, having a sausage roll. And <laughs> well, if you are at Bunnings, bring us a snag. Yeah. So there we go, we've got Matho, we've Texas. got uh, is it Daniel Hares, I think it's Daniel Hares, then Thomas Kim, yeah. Damien Sin, Caleb and, Chin and from, uh, from Texas, and Matho. Matho. Who's up, Matho? Big run. He didn't hit the bunker this time. Oh, oh there he goes. Oh, but he hits the bunker. Hey, hey you guys, I'm here. I'm here. <laughs> wow. That's his, uh, Oh, there he has the flag. Yellow flag up for, for Dominic. Not a good Oh, uh, Damien, sorry. Oh. Matho's there. That's a... Matho there walking so out with the show. So it's Thomas Kim. As the dust settles, a four Definitely on three. Definitely happy about that one. Oh, sorry, a three on one game. That's, uh... Jake Mel back to 24. It's 24. Well, there's a big one for one there, unfortunately. And they lost... They, uh, pull Matho. Oh, oh towel. Towel. I think the kids Perth talked towel there. Interesting. Up on points, throwing in yeah, the towel. Yeah, that was interesting. So, 
the one for one killed talk in that point. In, in case anyone's tuning in and don't understand how the uh, the penalties work, what's what's a one for one? What does that mean? Well, say Ringo's playing and he gets shot on somewhere that's not visible, like as in his pack, you know, top of his guard, bottom on of his foot, something on that bottom he can't see, back, something that he can't see, see or feel. and he continues to play as in shoot his gun, then they will pull him and they will pull the next nearest player. Uh, if it's somewhere on obvious... On the same team? Or from on, the other no, team? from his team. If only, that'd be great, wouldn't it? Wow, You'd shoot yourself a... and shoot the gun. <laughs> yeah. um, shoot everyone else around you. If, uh, if, there's, uh, if you get shot somewhere that's visible, like on your hand, on your gun, on your face, and you continue to play, the ref will throw a red flag, and that will be a two for one. They'll pull you, and then the refs will run in and pull the two nearest players from your team as well. So with five guys on a field at maximum any time, both the one for one and the two for one are pretty much nearly always game changing. Yeah, nearly it's almost always a loss. It's very hard to come back from a one for one, especially if it's early in the point where the team's doing a full lineup. So yeah, a few people tune in. We got someone tuning in from Guam, hello, uh, Ohio, Arizona, hello, Texas. Texas. Uh, what else have we got? Canada. Spread the word. Hey. Bill from Canada. Spread the word. Mrs. Rob from South Missouri, Mississippi. Mississippi. Yeah, this is awesome. I heard you guys are having a mini winter over there to like come through a spring winter. It's ra- it's in Mississippi. No, I just in the, in the states, like in Arizona. Oh, yeah, it's, it's, wow. it's um, it's, it's snowing in Arizona. I think You're NASCAR right. got cancelled this morning. NASCAR. So, so that means all the NASCAR back. fans can be watching the Super Series yes. webcast. Woo! Spread Winning. the word. Spread the word. <laughs> Kansas. Phil from Kansas. Phil from Kansas. Hi, Phil from Kansas. We're not in Kansas. We're not in Kansas anymore. All right, so a two-all draw, four mi- just over four minutes left on the clock. So basically back to where we started, just with a little bit less time. So talk are definitely, they're the, the ones from doing Central the, Missouri as well. They're moving up. Oh, John from Dubai. Dubai. Wow. Matt from New Zealand. Perth talk are taking big bites early, so they definitely, it's, they've been the aggressive in this match. Okay, six puts a break out, and Hopper almost runs over the top of Aaron McCoy. So, five alive. We're just checking Aaron McCauley in the snake one. So, oh, they lose, I was supposed to lose Mitch Mitch Hackett. And Torque lose one of the hairs. So, the Dorino side's blowing at the moment. Oh, and And Jesse Burke Burke as well. So, it's a three on four right now. I think that they're, I think that's another McCauley trying to make something happen to the snake. And he gets taken out. So it's now up to Plucker and ja- Jared Baker. And Jared Baker. Mr. Mr. Clutch. Oh, Jared's good at doing Clutch and so is Plucker. I think it's a four on two. Yeah. Yeah, I so believe so. Four on two. We've got two very clutch players right now still on the field. So I think that uh, you can clearly see some of the players that uh, have been struggling with the sun. Yeah, it's definitely uh, something that we do, you know, trying to get through so many games, we start early, so for the first few games and the last few games of the day, the sun does come into play sometimes. It's good at least they get to play from one end each time, so everyone gets to go on the bad end. Oh, Clarko just so cyclopsing Thomas Kim, that was, that was a, huge a big shot. kill. So a three on two game now, explicit. You know, explicit are known in, in the world over here of paintball as being this kind of team that can win those four on twos, the four on, the five on threes. They're really good at bringing these kind of games back. Well, especially with yeah. the two, like I said, with the two players they've got on the field right now, that's, uh, you know. Well, right about now is when they should really be focusing on the communication. Yeah, we see Parker being the aggressor in the defense, but it looks like he, the, the move got saw by, seen by Matho there shooting across at him. And here we go, we see Jared Baker launching. Taking Matho out, so running down. I wonder if Ooh, anyone yeah, that. Nice, nice move by Jared Baker. That was huge. So two on one. And is it, it two on one like or is it, is it one on oh, one? No, he's been hit. Oh, no, he's eliminated. Ah, that was huge. That was a great move by Jared Baker. So we can see and by the, and by Plucker as well. With the run through in the middle there. We can so even see on our cameras if we go if we can we cut back so to the Dorito away side. We can see how bad that sun is. That's what these guys are playing into when you're wearing those lenses. Not very hard to see yeah. little paintballs flying through the air. Well, it's good to have, you can it's see good the players nice weird lens, man. You can see the players sort of like looking for the. Oh, what was that? Ryan Alchin's asking, "Where's this going down? Anywhere near Sydney?" Yes, mate. At Rouse Hill in Sydney's northwest. One hour from the city centre. One hour from yeah. the city centre. Is there yeah. even a train station nearby? Yep. yep. If you can get there, you I can get Uber. Year, I think the late up this year is the new train station opens Ooh. at Rouse Hill. That's yeah. correct. Yep. Oh, wow. Yeah. 
Sydney Explicit are an Australian professional paintball team formed at the beginning of 2009 to compete in the Australian Super 7s Paintball Series hosted by Action Paintball. The team has been rebuilt in the off-season and look forward to taking it to the top pro teams in Australia. Their lineup is Nick Jones, Aaron McCauley, Jared Baker, Jake Mail Baxter, Taylor Hopkins, Jesse Burke, Mitch Hackett. Sydney Explicit is a dye precision sponsored team and will be using all the latest dye M2 markers, R2 hoppers, I5 goggle systems, and clothing. They're also backed by Paintball Edition. And we're back at the explicit pits. Dun, dun, dun. You can see. Uh, we have a 3 2 game. 3 2. Yep. Going to talk. And uh, number 32 there, Jared Baker. That was the guy who sort of did that big punch through uh, in that last point. Almost pulled it off. And number 15, the captain, Mick Jones, who uh, was also uh, instrumental. They were the last two guys uh, left on the field. And they nearly pulled it off. Was a, it was a tight game. One point in it after eight this, minutes and 20 seconds of the game. I wonder if this is going to be another 3 2 scenario. Mm. One minute 40. So that's something else we'll, we'll start doing for the next games. We need to get the score lines so we can we can start betting on it. Yep. I like that. So I know there's a few people tuning in wanting to see the Expendables, the New Zealand. There's a lot of love for the New Zealand teams over here. So they're up in, in three games time, they'll be up. Lots of people tuning in from uh, stateside. So yeah, America. Make sure well, you share, share it around. Hashtag yeah. Zachary from, from Louis, uh, Louis, St. Louis, sorry, St. Louis, Missouri. Uh, Slate Stewart from Alabama. Thomas uh, is coming. Uh, oh, the guys wouldn't stand a chance against us. <laughs> Who's this? Thomas Winaki. Winaki? So, Throw it down. Uh, all I can say, Thomas, is talk is cheap, mate. Get on a plane, come over here and uh, teach these Australians how to play 15 BPS, mate. Absolutely. Uh, Brad Brando, what's up from Charleston, South Carolina? Yeah, we had uh, people from the Dubai tribal. earlier. Yeah. Hello. So you're looking at talk on the screen right now. Good solid breakout. Oh, and they take one explosive player straight off uh, Dorito 3 off the break. So that was Jesse Burke. Five alive, and our talk's just going to want to just cross us up again. Play the advantage, there's only a minute left, they're up. All they've got to do is stay alive, yep. and they're going to come out of this match with a win. All they're going to do is just run the clock down. They don't have to do anything fancy. And all oh, they explicit lose uh, their Dorito one player. Holy moly! Big run by Mitch Hackett. <laughs> right at this moment now, but he hit the bunker. He hit the bunker. <laughs> he did all that work to get him down. And here we see uh, Damien just going to launch and feast. Here he goes, little battle up the middle. Oh, I think he did. And he stole. Oh, they missed yeah. it. So two oh. plays left now for explicit. Uh, or maybe just one. They don't even need to push. Oh. They should just. It was walk. a nice little move there by Plucker, but it was just just the wrong time. Explicit just threw bodies away towards the end. Yeah, yeah. well, look, you know, they'll. Okay, they just tell them. So talk with a two point lead. 30 seconds left at game time. That was a two point lead, yep. 4 2. That was a really good run from uh, Mitch. The problem was, I think, just you know, losing the two guys off the break was the killer for Explicit there. They, and then just, they were just starting straight on the back foot 30 seconds in. Mm. Playing into that sun. Seems
Okay, we're looking at the talks pit right now. Man, we've got tons of people from America watching yeah, right now, which is awesome. Thanks for joining us. Thanks, from, guys. Uh, Nebraska, Omaha, Nebraska. West Virginia. Do you think we'll tune in? Well. So Brian. many people from West Virginia. Brian yeah, from yeah. West Virginia. Yeah, Brian. Yeah. Sorry, Brian. Brian, William, Jerry. From yeah. Liberty WV. I'm assuming that's West Virginia, right? West yeah. Virginia. Spiky Born Bar. Sorry. Hey, Spiky from New Zealand. Shout out to his New Zealand boys. Jerry French from Martinburg, West Virginia as well. Wow. Hey, spread the word, people. This is great. Share it. Yeah, share, 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 please. Hashtag grow the sport. We're doing this yeah. for free for everybody so that uh, more people can see what we do with the game. And we've given a different angle here because we still shoot 15 balls per second oh, in here Australia. We go. We've got Colin Lee from the UK just yeah. joined us. And we have Jason Young now from Florida. Oh, that was very interesting. And Jeremy Shinko from and Bilpin. Bilpin. Where's wow. Bilpin? Where the apples come from. Yeah, apple country. Taylor Hawkins. Jared Baker's off to the wall as well. Oh yeah, Max Bliss is off to the races now. They want to make something happen. They want this. It's good. Good to see. One player getting shot out for talk on the Dorito side. And now there was Jared to Jared Trades. Oh. Listen to that. 15 DPS. Machine guns at those players. Oh, they're there. just destroying Tor. That's it. And that's Tor. <laughs> Yeah, not every time. That was that was much better breakout. See, they were just on the guns. So that's it. Tor take that win with a two point lead. So, you know, if some people are new tuning in, uh, maybe we can quickly uh, jump to a video about what the Super Sevens is. A bit of a rundown of how we we do things here down under. With our M7 format. And we'll be back to watch our next next game after this. What is Super Sevens Paintball? Paintball is a five on five game where two teams go head to head. 10 minute matches fighting to take out the other team for one point. Teams get one point by shooting all five opponents and pushing the button at the enemy team's start base. Players are out when a paintball hits and breaks on them, including their gun. Between each point, there is a two minute break to reload, clean up and prepare for the next point. To win, a team must gain a four point lead or be ahead on points when the 10 minute time limit expires. For more information, check out www.super7spaintball.com. So, uh, sorry, well, I was just going to say, why don't we quickly talk about what's going to happen today? So, we're, we're still in prelims, so we've got two more rounds of prelims left, which is. What is two that? rounds in total. Five, so six, seven, eight. Eight more games we got we got today to watch, and then we're moving on to some finals. Yeah, semi-finals and finals. So top four teams from semi-pro will be coming up to the top field, and obviously the top four teams from pro. And uh, then we'll be doing a little bit of round robin uh, semi-pro finals, followed by, uh, by sorry semi-pro semi-finals, followed by pro semi-finals, followed by uh, semi-pro finals, and then pro finals. Uh, so yeah, there's uh, for each of the teams here, the ones that make the finals now, they've got uh, between uh, three and four matches, whether they played their first one today, or left today, and uh, it's for all the box and dice. Yep. Uh, we're going to leave Ringo, he's got he's to head off and uh, he's going to go play. Yeah, I'm gonna have some fun. <laughs> Give us some material to work on. <laughs> um, if Also two guys, I, nice. you know, we've got the... Uh, the webcast here on Facebook on 720p. If you're watching on the big screen at home, you may want to go to uh, uh, super7spaintball.com uh, forward slash live stream or even our YouTube channel uh, on the Action Paintball YouTube channel uh, where we are broadcasting the same webcast in 1080p. So it looks a lot nicer on the big screen TVs if you're at home. Uh, do you have a big shout out a few other people here uh, from Chris Lupton. Jesus loves paintball. Thank you very much. I believe he does. Um, uh, John from Guam, uh, Colin Lee from the UK is watching, uh, Jason Young from Florida, and uh, Tamara saying go talk, which they did, uh, Jerry French from Martinsburg, West Virginia. Yeah, we already went over there, Mike. We did that one already? Yeah. Give okay. him another shout out. <laughs> yeah, give us another shout out. I like the sound of my own voice. Uh, so, bro okay, Daniel, uh, pro finals should be probably be in about three hours, I'd say three, three and a half hours at this stage, depending on how the games go according to schedule. Yeah, it's about 20 minutes per match at the moment. So, yeah. What is Super 7 Paintball?
Welcome to the Lux Experience. Yeah, Alright, we're back. Skytech UAV, our eye in the sky. The only live paintball you can watch from the air. From a gunship. Yeah. Very important, that. <laughs> so we're, uh, we're about to watch Eastside Raw on the left of your screen, or uh, take on uh, Marauders. So Eastside Raw are a uh, Queensland team from up north, and Marauders are a hometown team. They're from Sydney in Australia. They've got uh, Dave Vasquez helping out. Uh, he's from Sacramento DMG, the divisional team. And Eastside Raw have uh, Harrison Fry helping out from Seattle Thunder. Nelmo does his run with his gun along the side to the Trito 4, off the break again. And Marauders lose the first player and Elmo loses one. So, and Marauders lose the second player. So it's now three on four. Dave Vesquez from Marauders pumps into Trito 2. And uh, you can see from behind there. Oh, and I think that was Jason Byers from the little wedge was took out the snake corner for all. Yeah, captain of Marauders. So three on three right now. You can see the two players there in what we call the mini race, the little Ws. Yeah, that sun looks like it's playing a big uh, big hand in these in these early matches today. Here we go. Diddle daddle, up the middle. Big old traders, uh, Jason. Jason in or out? Ref's checking him out. Putting back in. Clean. Yeah. Another play getting shot for Raw down on the Dorito side. So I think that's that's all she wrote. Yeah, I think that was a good call by the ref there because Jason actually shot the Raw player as he sort of came out. If we get a replay on that, you might even say yeah, it. And uh, yeah, so and then after Jason Jason shot him again in the face, as Jason ran past, he's been shot off the side of the pack. So. I think you'll. I think you'll. Hopefully, we'll see it here. This is a bit he slow from both guys. He shot up, him up out. Missed, knew he was there. Shot him again, and then he shoots him after he runs past. <laughs> so yeah, that's an easy one for a ref to tell the difference. If you know one guy's got shot in the face, the other one's got shot in the side, you can tell who shot who first. So yeah, the way we uh, have things over here, um, anyone's anyone's welcome to come over and play. We have. US pro players able to jump on the field. We do limit it to one US pro player on the field, but teams like uh, Expendables do have two on the roster, but they're only allowed to put one on the field. Yeah, that, that's for the ranking points. I mean, uh, we had a situation with the Masters last year. Uh, Sacramento DMG brought over uh, five guys, and they actually had a full team uh, play the event. Uh, also, awesome bunch of guys. Uh, and, you know, they weren't playing for ranking points. So, you, you know, if, if a team uh, of uh, all pros would want to come and play, they can. They just won't. They'll just lose a lot of ranking points. But unless they want to play the whole series to win the gold rings, then it doesn't matter. Those gold rings look look mighty fine. Yes, they do. 